Do you imagine life without sphincters? What a mess things would be. <clears throat> Sounds like a shitty life. <coughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction YouTube, Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram yeah, so for more juicy content. content. Please subscribe if you have not, and hit the like button. And... <coughs> well, my wife likes that sound. She really has a detestation for like vomit sounds or clearing throat sounds, especially yours. I thought you were making like a dirty joke for a second. No, no, <laughs> I keep those private. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? No, she really does. Because sometimes I'll I'll <sighs> clear my throat because I was eating or something and make like a <clears throat> sound, and she'll look at me like. Anyways, uh, today we got a video. Uh, it's called The True History Behind the Indian Flag. Oh. oh so it's going to go a little on hold. I hope this is true because if it's not, there's going to be a lot of people saying it's. Don't. Getting mad at us. Don't blame us if the information is incorrect. <laughs> we are just here to react. We're watching this with you. We've never seen this before. <laughs> and it might surprise you to know we're unfamiliar with the history of the Indian flag. Yes. Uh, so. it, I did see a little different in, uh, in uh, what was it, Rocket Boys, right? It, it, yeah, because of, of the, the time period yeah. for that. You know when it came yeah. out? Anyways, that, so that was interesting. Yeah. Anyways, go watch, check out our Rocket Boys review, please. Yes. <clears throat> Love that bass. Is that Waka? No. No, it's definitely here on FTD Facts, we've made tons of videos voice. about countries and other places and people and more. What now in this place. episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a national flag. It's a new area where we're venturing in that allows us to give you more facts about the amazing countries of this world. A large portion of our fan base is from India, so we decided to start there. How's it going everybody? My name is Leroy Kenton and I'm going to dive into some facts about the Indian flag, you know, I'll give you the history behind behind it and why it's so meaningful to Indians today. Now before I continue, I just have to do a couple big shout outs to some of my brothers from India. Here we have Nakul from India just enjoying the night out saying great work, he loves the videos. And here we have another big supporter of FTD Facts, Suraj. He says, I'm watching all the way from India. Keep going, brother. It looks like you're in a cricket stadium, I think. It's great meeting all of you. I've learned so much talking with you guys on social media. And if you guys want your pictures featured in an upcoming video, send it to me on Instagram. The link to that is down below. For the Indian people, the national flag has great significance and meaning as it symbolizes the struggles it took for India to become an independent nation. It also serves as a symbol of unity to show that despite being of different faiths and religions, the Indian people at the core are all one. Now, the current Indian national flag was designed by Pangali Vinkaya. He was an agriculturist and an Indian freedom fighter from the state of Andhra Pradesh, who lived from 1876 to 1963. Before the British occupied India, India used to be made up of different princely states, each with their own flags. Now this changed after a revolt in 1857. The British introduced a flag to represent their greater Indian territories, and that flag was used from 1858 to 1947. Now there was a ban that was placed on flying the Indian flag, that led to the use of the Swaraj flag as a sign of protest in India during the freedom struggle. Now this flag was a tricolor rectangle with a chakra or spinning wheel at its center. After India's independence, many other designs of the flag were considered. However, that same tricolored flag with the chakra was adopted in its current state as the national flag of India on July 22nd, 1947. But how exactly did we get to the current version of the Indian flag? Of course, it didn't happen overnight. So let's go back into Our history. Day. I'm going to give you a little bit more details <laughs> on the process. We've only now, the first one. ever national Indian flag, commonly called joke. the Kolkata flag, looked quite different from what it looks like today. It had many religious Ooh. symbols and had eight roses on it Never with the phrase Bande Matram, meaning I praise you, mother. It's believed to have been first raised on August 7th, 1906 at Parsi Begin Square, Green Park, in Kolkata, now known as 
as Kolkata. The second version of the flag came with some more modifications and was raised by Madame Kama in Paris in 1907. Another flag was Whoa. then used in the year of 1917 during what was known as the Home Rule Movement. So this flag was raised by the leaders of the movement, Lakmanya Tilak and Dr. Annie Besant. Next up, it was the flag of 1921. This flag was endorsed by Mahatma Gandhi, who we probably have to do a video on him one day. But anyways, he wanted all the communities of India to be represented in the flag, and this flag had three colors. At the top was white, then green, and at the bottom, it was red. White symbolized the minority groups in India, green represented Muslims, and the red represented Hindu and Sikh communities. The charka was drawn across all the bands to symbolize the unity. However, this was never adopted as an official flag of Congress. Now, shortly after that, since not everybody was happy with this interpretation of the flag, a new flag was born. But in any case, here we have the version similar to Gandhi's flag called the Swaraj flag. And this was introduced on the 13th of April, 1923, during a procession by local Congress volunteers that commemorated the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. The Swaraj flag with the spinning wheel designed by Pingali Venkaya was hoisted. Now, unlike Gandhi's flag, the Swaraj flag became the official flag of Congress in 1931. However, by then, the flag had already become the symbol of the independence movement. And finally, on July 22, 1947, it was adopted as a free Indian national flag by the Constituent Assembly of India. The only alteration they made to the flag was to replace the spinning wheel with Emperor Ashoka's Dharma Chakra. This flag depicted the wheel of the law that was was made by the famous 3rd century BC Indian Emperor Ashoka. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look to the meaning of Ashoka's chakra. The Ashoka chakra had great historical importance in India. It said that after receiving enlightenment or nirvana, Lord Buddha met with five of his disciples and preached to them his first sermon describing the Dharma chakra. This was taken by Emperor Ashoka to represent on top of his pillars. Now his pillars are a series of columns dispersed throughout the northern Indian subcontinent. The chakra or wheel in the Indian flag has actually been taken from the lion capital of Ashoka which is a sculpture of four lions standing back to back in Sarnath, India. So now we talked about Ashoka's Dharma Chakra and the history behind that. Let's look at some of the other aspects of the flag. The flag consists of three equal sized horizontal stripes. The saffron yeah, color represents courage and sacrifice. It indicates letting go of any biases or egos and encourages people to unite and become one. The white represents truth and purity. According to Indian scriptures and philosophy, the color white is also also used to symbolize cleanliness and knowledge. The green represents peace and prosperity. According to Indian philosophy, the color green is a festive color that symbolizes life and happiness. At the center of the middle stripes, here we see the Ashoka Chakra in navy blue to represent the ideas of law and dharma as it does on the Ashoka pillar. The Ashoka Chakra was chosen because it symbolizes the laws of Dharma or righteousness. The color of the Ashoka Chakra, navy blue, was chosen because it represents a universal color. It's the color of the sky, it's the color of the ocean. The 24 spokes of the wheel represent 24 hours of every day. It also represents the 24 Dharma Rishis or saints of the Hindu religion. Now India keeps their flag at a very high standard. There's a lot of strict guidelines on how the flag can actually be used. And there's only one licensed flag production and supply unit in India. The guidelines about the design and specifications are decided by the BIS or the Bureau of Indian Standards. And yeah, the Khadi Development and Village Industries Commission is the only licensed flag production and supply unit located in India. They're the only ones who are allowed to allocate flag production to other regional groups. And more specifically, they're based in Hubli, Karnataka, India. The Indian flag must also be made of khadi cloth, which is a special type of hand-spun cloth made of silk or cotton. Khadi was made popular by Mahatma Gandhi, and the flag was handcrafted to honor him. Now guys, I'm not even kidding about this. The guidelines get even more strict. Every roll of cloth that would be used to create an Indian flag is actually sent to a laboratory to test the quality. 
Also, the flag must never touch the ground or water. Common it cannot be yeah. used as drapery in any form. The flag may not be placed upside down. Too, if placed vertically, the, the saffron the edge code. should be on the left. Until the year 2001, private citizens were only allowed to hoist the flag on national holidays. Hmm. This law was changed when a citizen filed a suit against the court arguing that every Indian citizen had a right to fly their national flag. And I mean rightfully so, because people want to be free to just wave their flags whenever because they are proud of their country, right? Now the man that fought for this right was Navneen Jindal, and the courts found his arguments valid and lifted the ban on January 26, 2002. Now every Indian citizen has the right to hoist the Indian flag on any nice. given day as long as they maintain the dignity and respect and honor of the flag. That concludes this episode of FTD Facts. That was your brief history on the Indian flag. Please let me know down below in the comments section what flag you should There's a lot of information in there. Though. A lot of info. Once again, if any of it was wrong, please let us know that it was wrong in a kind way that because we didn't make a video. Just, <laughs> just letting you know. But yeah, that was a lot of information that I, I, I had no clue about. And it's similar. I figured most countries have a flag law. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Obviously, sure they do. We have a flag law here. Yeah. Technically. <laughs> You're not even supposed to wear our flag as clothing, mm -hmm. but the patriots that love the flag a lot don't seem to listen to that part of the flag code at all. <laughs> yep. And there's, there's a reason if you see on the military on their shoulder, the flag will look as if it's backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding, the reason you have that is that that comes from the fact that if you were holding the flag, that's what the flag would look like if you were advancing forward. And it's supposed to symbolize the fact that the military will never retreat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... But yeah, same thing about d don't let it touch the ground. Yeah. If you see... I'll point it out because we'll be driving... Any anytime we see a, a flag when we're driving around, I'll go, America. <laughs> and there was one just recently I saw, and I pointed it out, and I, I said to Andrani, said they need, they need to fix that flag because the whole bottom... There was a whole bottom part of it that was torn. And that's... You're not supposed to fly a flag that's torn and tattered you know it's weird other countries? other countries about other countries no the other countries think about the united states what well, they think about us our obsession with the flag oh because it doesn't happen everybody has a stuff but you go to another country I may mean, obviously there's exclusions to every rule but the fact there's flags on houses there's flags on our schools the fact that we right, pledge flag every morning yeah. to a flag we pledge the flag like, yeah it's it's very strange to other countries yeah i can see i can much, see how it would be how much we uh love our flag yeah. <laughs> but yeah it was really cool cuz i do love seeing the history of flags i do too because they change it's i mean not anymore um but they used to like change the american flag changed a lot, ten billion times. Well, and it could change at any time. I'm sure you guys if know this, but yeah, the stars, the stars all stand for the states. So anytime there was a change in states, the the, the the stars change. So it's a like the Constitution. Although there'd be constitutional people who wouldn't agree with what I'm about to say, <laughs> it's a living document. Yeah. <laughs> so the flag itself is alive and can have. Yeah. And I don't mean that literally. It's the sense of that. Anytime it's the there's a soul change, of America. Anytime there's a change, it, that that could change. The stripes will never change. The the number of the stripes, the size and the colors. Yeah. That won't change. But yeah, it's. I think the last time it was changed is in the 50s with Hawaii. Yeah. Correct. Hawaii and Alaska were the last two yeah. to join. And now what Corbin and I are hoping is they'll get rid of Texas and add Puerto Rico and we don't have to even change the flag. That's true. Uh, <laughs> technically, we should add at least two. DC should have a statehood and uh, Puerto Rico should be a state if they want to be. Yeah. But that's anyway, a whole different idea. But, but, yeah. but yeah, it was really I cool. This. I always thought um, it was just like a, a farming, like uh, one of those um, things. People for weaving. Mm. I thought that was what the the center of it was in the Indian flag. I probably thought that at first yeah. as well. I thought um, I think the Indian flag is really clean. Mm -hmm. I like how it's just the I three color too. and then the circle, the the whatever. I, I Yeah, know a couple in there were like, wow, that's a, there's a lot going on, and there's some national flags that there's a lot going on. But some state flags too. It's it's really cool because of the meaning. There's always this great intentionality behind it, and it's, oh. that's a trend and human beings that I love is that the, the symbolism has meaning. Yeah. A uh, deep meaning for everybody. So and, that was cool. And Johnny, yeah. are there uh, state flags for every state or no? No, it's just one Indian flag and states don't have their own. I, I, I've heard that some South Indian states have flags. Flag. Okay. I don't know. Do you know every state in the United States has their own flag? I, I, 
Yeah. Yeah. The coolest one is actually, believe it or not, I think uh, South Carolina. I think South Carolina has I it. can't picture its flag. It's blue with a palm tree and a moon. Oh, I would have never recognized that. I do like California's flag as well. I do too. Um, but I feel like most of the state's flags here are just terrible. And one little thing about flags as well. We'll rip on Texas once more. <laughs> um, in America, oh my God. every state, except Texas, is supposed to fly their flag a little lower than America because even though we are the United States and have individual rights as states, we all recognize that we're united as one and that we look to the national flag as the one that we held the highest. But Texas has no problem flying their flag at the same height as Texas. Said it once, I'll say it again. State. Texas is a cult. The, the national uh, the national flag. <laughs> Anyways, that was really cool. I really enjoyed that. Uh, for, once again, if any information was wrong, please let us know that it was wrong and what the correct information is and take it out on someone else and not me. <laughs> let us know down below.